Oral and Maxillofacial Pathology, Wikipedia Article Audio Oral and maxillofacial pathology refers to the diseases of the mouth, jaws, and related structures such as salivary glands, temporomandibular joints, facial muscles and perioral skin. The mouth is an important organ with many different functions. It is also prone to a variety of medical and dental disorders. Investigation Example Pathologies Congenital Malocclusion Cleft lip and palate Macroglossia Hereditary causes Acquired causes Consequences Treatments Ankyloglossia Staphne defect Taurus palatinus Taurus mandibularis Eagle syndrome Acquired Vascular Infective Traumatic Autoimmune Metabolic Inflammatory Neurological Neoplastic Degenerative Environmental The specialty oral and maxillofacial pathology is concerned with diagnosis and study of the causes and effects of diseases affecting the oral and maxillofacial region. It is sometimes considered to be a specialty of dentistry and pathology. Sometimes the term head and neck pathology is used instead but this might imply that the pathologist deals with otorhinolaryngologic disorders in addition to maxillofacial disorders. In this role there is some overlap between the expertise of head and neck pathologists and that of endocrine pathologists. Unknown Oral and maxillofacial pathology as a specialty a biopsy is indicated when the patient's clinical presentation, past history, or imaging studies do not allow a definitive diagnosis. A biopsy is a surgical procedure that involves the removal of a piece of tissue sample from the living organism for the purpose of microscopic examination. In most cases, biopsies are carried out under local anesthesia. Some biopsies are carried out endoscopically, others under image guidance, for instance ultrasound, computed tomography, or magnetic resonance imaging in the radiology suite. Examples of the most common tissues examined by means of a biopsy include oral and sinus mucosa, bone, soft tissue, skin, and lymph nodes. Geographic Variation United Kingdom Types of biopsies typically used for diagnosing oral cancers are 1. Excisional biopsy, a small lesion is totally excised. This method is preferred, if the lesions are approximately 1 cm or less in diameter, clinically and seemingly benign and surgically accessible. Large lesions which are more diffused and dispersed in nature or those which are seemed to be more clinically malignant are not conducive to total removal. 2. Incisional biopsy, a small portion of the tissue is removed from an abnormal looking area for examination. This method is useful in dealing with large lesions. If the abnormal region is easily accessed, the sample may be taken at your doctor's office. If the tumor is deeper inside the mouth or throat, the biopsy may need to be performed in an operating room. General anesthesia is administered to eliminate any pain. 3. Exfoliative cytology, a suspected area is gently scraped to collect a sample of cells for examination. These cells are placed on a glass slide and stained with dye, so that they can easily be viewed under RA microscope. If any cells appear abnormal, a deeper biopsy will be performed. 
a great many diseases involve the mouth, jaws, and orofacial skin. Some example pathologies which can involve the oral and maxillofacial region are listed. Some are more common than others, and this list is by no means complete. The examples are considered according to a surgical sieve. Cleft lip and palate is a multifactorial congenital disorder occurring in several forms. Cleft lip, cleft palate and cleft lip with palate. A cleft lip is an opening of the upper lip mainly due to the failure of fusion of the medial nasal processes with the palatal processes. A cleft palate is the opening of the soft and hard palate in the mouth which is due to the failure of the palatal shelves to fuse together. The palate's main function is to demarcate the nasal and oral cavity, without which the patient will have problems with swallowing, eating, and speech. Thus affecting the quality of life and in some cases certain functions. Some examples include food going up into the nasal cavity during swallowing as the soft palate is not present to close the cavity during the process. Speech is also affected as the nasal cavity is a source of resonance during speech and failure to manipulate spaces in the cavities will result in the lack of ability to produce certain consonants in audible language. Is a rare condition, categorized by tongue enlargement which will eventually create a crenate border in relation to the embrasures between the teeth. For mild cases, Surgical treatment is not mandatory but if speech is affected, speech therapy may be useful. Reduction glossectomy may be required for severe cases. Is a condition where there is an abnormal ossification of the stylohyoid ligament. This leads to an increase in the thickness and the length of the stylohyoid process and the ligament. Pain is felt due to the pressure applied to the internal jugular vein. Eagle syndrome occurs due to elongation of the styloid process or calcification of the stylohyoid ligament. However, the cause of the elongation hasn't been known clearly. It could occur spontaneously or could arise since birth. Usually normal stylohyoid process is 2.5 to 3 cm in length, if the length is longer than 3 cm, it is classified as an elongated stylohyoid process. Bacterial Viral Fungal There are many oral and maxillofacial pathologies which are not fully understood. Oral and maxillofacial pathology, previously termed oral pathology, is a speciality involved with the diagnosis and study of the causes and effects of diseases affecting the oral and maxillofacial regions. It can be considered a speciality of dentistry and pathology. Oral pathology is a closely allied speciality with oral and maxillofacial surgery and oral medicine. The clinical evaluation and diagnosis of oral mucosal diseases are in the scope of oral and maxillofacial pathology specialists and oral medicine practitioners, both disciplines of dentistry. When a microscopic evaluation is needed, a biopsy is taken, and microscopically observed by a pathologist. The American Dental Association uses the term oral and maxillofacial pathology and describes it as the specialty of dentistry and pathology which deals with the nature, identification, and management of diseases affecting the oral and maxillofacial regions. It is a science that investigates the causes, processes and effects of these diseases. In some parts of the world, oral and maxillofacial pathologists take on responsibilities in forensic odontology. There are fewer than 30 consultant oral and maxillofacial pathologists in the UK. A dental degree is mandatory, but a medical degree is not. 
The shortest pathway to becoming an oral pathologist in the UK is completion of two years general professional training and then five years in a diagnostic histopathology training course. After passing the required exams and gaining a certificate of completion of specialist training, the trainee is entitled to apply for registration as a specialist. Many oral and maxillofacial pathologists in the UK are clinical academics, having undertaken a PhD either prior to or during training. Generally, oral and maxillofacial pathologists in the UK are employed by dentals or medical schools and undertake their clinical work at university hospital departments. There are five practicing oral pathologists in New Zealand. Oral pathologists in New Zealand also take part in forensic evaluations. Gingivitis A common periodontal disease is gingivitis. Periodontal refers to the area the infection affects, which include the teeth, gums, and tissues surrounding the teeth. Bacteria cause inflammation of the gums which become red, swollen, and can bleed easily. The bacteria along with mucus form a sticky colorless substance called plaque which harbors the bacteria. Plaque that is not removed by brushing and flossing hardens to form tartar that brushing doesn't clean. Smoking is a major risk factor. Treatment of gingivitis is dependent on how severe and how far the disease has progressed. If the disease is not too severe it is possible to treat it with chlorhexidine rinse and brushing with fluoride toothpaste to kill the bacteria and remove the plaque, but once the infection has progressed antibiotics may be needed to kill the bacteria, periodontitis when gingivitis is not treated it can advance to periodontitis, when the gums pull away from the teeth and form pockets that harbor the bacteria. Bacterial toxins and the body's natural defenses start to break down the bone and connective tissues. The tooth may eventually become loose and have to be removed. Scarlet fever is caused by a particular streptococci species, streptococci pyogenes, and is classified by a severe form of bacterial sore throat. The condition involves the release of pyrogenic and erythrogenic endotoxins from the immune system. It starts as tonsillitis and pharyngitis before involving the soft palate and the tongue. It usually occurs in children where a fever occurs and an erythematous rash develops on the face and spreads to most part of the body. If not treated, late stages of this condition may include a furred, raw, red tongue. Treatment options include penicillin and the prognosis is generally excellent. New Zealand Herpes simplex is very common in the mouth and lips. This virus can cause blisters and sores around the mouth and lips. HSV infections tend to recur periodically. Although many people get infected with the virus, only 10% actually develop the sores. The sores may last anywhere from 3-10 days and are very infectious. Some people have recurrences either in the same location or at a nearby site. Unless the individual has an impaired immune system, e.g., owing to HIV or cancer-related immune suppression, Recurrent infections tend to be mild in nature and may be brought on by stress, sun, menstrual periods, trauma, or physical stress. Mumps of the salivary glands is a viral infection of the parotid glands. This results in painful swelling at the sides of the mouth in both adults and children, which leads to a sore throat, and occasionally pain in chewing. The infection is quite contagious. Today mumps is prevented by getting vaccinated in infancy, by A measles, mumps, rubella vaccination and subsequent boosters. There is no specific treatment for mumps except for hydration and painkillers with complete recovery ranging from 5 to 10 days. 
Sometimes mumps can cause inflammation of the brain, pancreatitis, testicular swelling, or hearing loss. Burning mouth syndrome is a disorder where there is a burning sensation in the mouth that has no identifiable medical or dental cause. The disorder can affect anyone but tends to occur most often in middle-aged women. BMS has been hypothesized to be linked to a variety of factors such as the menopause, dry mouth, and allergies. BMS usually lasts for several years before disappearing for unknown reasons. Other features of this disorder include anxiety, depression, and social isolation. There is no cure for this disorder and treatment includes use of hydrating agents, pain medications, vitamin supplements, or the usage of antidepressants.